ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to another class guide, a starter guide for Lost Ark. Today we're going to be covering the Striker, uh, which is actually one of the newer classes added to the game overall. Um, not the most recent, but it has been relatively recent. Um, and he is part of their uh, move to try and not gender lock all the classes. So like offering a different option because they had the Battle Master or the War Dancer in, as it's known in the West. Um, as a character, and then the striker came out as a male alternative because the war dancer is female. Um, so this is going to be, uh, they share a same identity. Um, the, the class mirrors are like 80 to 90% the same. And then they have some subtle, like they have a couple different abilities, some, and they have different class engravings and they have slightly different play styles and, and different ways that they can be the most effective. So striker is definitely, if you like war dancer, have you seen the war dancer video? Uh, it's going to be very similar, uh, but let's go through uh, this video is going to be all about the overall game design, the uh, des the idea and the uh, implementation of Striker, what you can expect from Endgame, how it plays and how the mechanics work well together. Uh, it's not going to meant to be an advanced guide where we go over the meta, what's best, how to pick, and we're not going to go in detail to, you know, what to pick in each tree, what are the best abilities, what abilities you need for leveling. Uh, mainly because I think that it's going to be awesome to see the new regions develop their own meta. Um, I think currently the, the meta that exists between the existing regions, uh, Korea, Japan, and Russia, has been relatively different. And I think it's going to be the same for Western Europe and North America, and that they will probably end up developing a slightly different meta or strategy for playing each class. And I'm sure that Striker will have some emergent gameplay as will all the classes. So to leave that open and just not in any case things change, whatever, we're just gonna talk about the class itself, uh, what it has, what it does, and what the end game looks like. But first, if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Who knows, I might even be streaming right now. So let's start with the basic attack. Uh, it's gonna be just this combo here. It's very similar to the ward answer, but it's just this four hit combo. The basic attacks aren't really all that important in this game. In fact, there are many classes that never basic attack. It's irrelevant. Um, there are some that do, and you'll use the, the basic attack as a backup or to break objectives like walls or totems, things in a quest, things like that. Um, but it's not all important, but it's cool to see kind of how the theming goes. Um, the movement ability is uh, a very similar to the ward answer in that you just get this medium dash on a six second cooldown. It's pretty snappy pretty reliable it's not there's not any nuance to it it's just i need to dash uh so i dash and that's basically it um, the identity is the same as the war dancer in that you have these elemental orbs so as you attack and deal damage with abilities you can see that the orbs at the bottom of my screen are filling up and when i get enough or deal enough damage uh, i'll unlock these uh elemental orbs they're gonna have different names they're called different things on different clients and i'm sure when we get the western release it's going to be called something different as well. Chakra, uh, you know, mystic orbs, mystic orb, elemental orb, whatever. Uh, but you get, you get these as your builders get used, and then you get to spend them on your spenders. You'll see these down at the bottom. Uh, Tiger Toss and then these ultimates are the ones that you can use. Uh, you see mystic orb cost. It consumes one or two to use it, uh, and you get a big uh, burst of damage, but it's only available as a secondary resource of, of, of uh, away from just using your regular abilities. So you can see as I build it up, I get two. I now have access to the two spenders I have on my bar. So I can activate it and we get some damage and all that. So every class in the game has more abilities than can fit on their bar. Then you can choose what your build's going to be for the content you're doing by equipping, you know, for strikers, gonna be eight abilities on your bar. Um, so whether or not you have multiple, like one spender, no spender, or more spender than just one, like two or three. Um, it depends on your build and, and your gear and your uh, engravings on what you want to play with. Um, next, let's cover the awakenings because this is the ultimates. These are the things that you'll get. You'll get your first awakening as you reach soft cap at level 50 and you'll do a four hour quest to unlock your second one. And you can equip one ultimate at a time, one awakening in your awakening slot. This is true for PVP and for PVE. Um, the first one is S of the Beast and is it might be one of my favorites in the game. It's super satisfying, very cool to look at. It's just, it looks, I'll just show you. It looks like this. Big hit, big hit, big hit, hit, and then a big explosion. So it's a four hit combo, does a bunch of damage, and you move forward with it as well, which is nice. Um, and then if you miss, it has like a downside to it, but 
very reliable it's not on the fastest side but it's not slow it's got some good hits to it lots of aoe and very very satisfying to look at uh, and then great teaching is the second one so we can equip this and uh this one is just gonna be you know what here we go <laughs> It's got that. I mean, I, I what I love about Smilegate is they're just they're not afraid to buy into aesthetic and uh, expectations. So for this one, you just have the typical leg up in the air with the foot down, but it's just such a satisfying delivery where you just get this big explosion slam down. Huge. It just it feels so good. Uh, very very satisfying. Um, so that's the striker. Uh, we can cover the class engravings really quick and then just do a general overview uh, to wrap things out because I want this video to be really short. Um, so there are a lot of end game customization systems that exist in the game um, with gems and everything else. The one that I want to cover for an overview that I think is important to know about is the engraving system. So engravings come from your, your jewelry, your ability uh, stone, and then your two engraving slots. As you get more engraving points, you unlock these permanent passives that give you benefits. Every class in the game has access to these combat or general engravings. And you'll mix these together in certain ways to create a build that you like. And they all do various things. Um, I'm not going to go through the general ones. However, every class does have two class engravings that are very powerful. They are unique to that class that no one else gets access to. And they generally can be very build defining. Um, for Striker, the two are Elements Balance and Special Strike. These probably will have different names when they come to the West. Um, this is just a uh, third-party translation on the Russian client for my striker. Um, and these are op usually for every class are quite polarizing as well. The first one is elemental skills, which is are your spenders here. Um, they get increased damage, and when you use them, only one of the elements is consumed. And that works great for striker because you can see that this one is two, 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 and I think there's one that's one, yeah. So they have, uh, most of theirs are two spenders. So you get more damage out of your elemental attacks and then when you spend you use one instead of uh two so you're actually able to get more spenders on your bar and you can keep on to longer because they cost less which is nice and then you have special strike which is kind of like the opposite striker gains an additional chakra elements uh so you, instead of getting three you get four and then uh when using uh skills all filled chakras are consumed so for each additional chakra the damage gets increased so instead of you know you get to your elemental skills are better and you have less cost per it's the opposite you have all all whatever orbs you have gets expended by one spender regardless but it increases the damage of that spender a lot so if you end up building a bunch up uh you know you can get a bunch of these here bunch of damage hit it up there and then you can do this and you, when you do one spender it's significantly stronger so that's the other class engraving now, a lot of times you'll end up, uh, because these are designed to be polar opposites, uh, you'll, most classes will end up running only one of them at a time um, and then kind of build their build around it. There are a few classes that use both because they're not designed this way, uh, but the majority of the game is designed with these to be uh, relatively mutually exclusive. Like they just, they counter each other out, right? You wouldn't use both of these together. Um, so that's the striker. So the question is, what does the striker do in endgame? How does it fit into groups? And how does it differ from its female counterpart the war dancer i think the simplest way to explain the striker versus the war dancer is the war dancer is more consistent dps uh very flowy very constant damage output um, and can keep up that regular dps for long periods of time and i think the striker is a bit the opposite and that the striker is more leaning towards burst damage the striker in general is a little bit slower not as flowy as the war dancer uh, but hits harder and has those big spikes in damage. So if you like being, you know, constant moving, uh, strong reactions with the War Dancer, that's going to be your your jam. And then the Striker is a little bit slower, but hits has those nice big spikes in damage as well. Um, in PVE, Striker is relatively easy to play. Um, kind of has that like a little bit more durable, but because it is a melee class with relatively short range, not as short as the, as the War Dancer, but relatively short. Uh, you have to be very careful about where you position yourself, and this is true in PvP as well. I think War Dancer and Striker are some of the harder classes to play in PvP because you don't have, you know, the the constant immunities that say a Deathblade would, but you still have to get in very close um, and and deal your damage right up in their face. So it takes some practice to get those down, but I think he's super satisfying, very easy to uh, very easy to fall in love with as you play the character. So 
that's gonna do it for striker uh for this quick overview and uh yeah let's go on to the next class i hope this helps you decide on what class to play let's go if you enjoyed yourself today leave a like down below you can support me and my work on patreon and view patreon exclusive content link in the description thank you so much for tuning in and i'll see you in the next one